Hello, everybody. Welcome on our webinar on risk management when setting up activities with young people with special needs. Why risk management, you would ask? Well, when we are developing activities and when we are setting up uh, nice projects in mixed groups yeah? and we have several people in our group uh, with special needs yeah then uh, safety is something very 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 important especially when we do activities sometimes outside or in the classroom or in a meeting room where a lot of movement is involved and then we have to take care yeah, about safety that nothing goes wrong yeah? nothing goes wrong within the project nothing goes wrong with the activity, nothing goes wrong also for the young people that are involved. So when we're talking about risk management yeah, and about how to preventing it, we can take into account several basic principles. Yeah? And basically we have uh, four different principles that we have to take into account. I will go over with it, uh, with you. The first one is um, when we start to set up an activity, we have to take into account who is in our group. Yeah? We have to identify the specific needs yeah, and the specific participants who will take part in our group. Yeah? We have to have a clear answer on that. The second one is then we have to create a plan, yeah? a plan to reduce and eliminate potential risks that we have been identifying. Not only a plan we have, but we also have to have a plan how will we respond. So what will we do when something happens? Yeah. Because then yeah, all our preparations comes into mind. Yeah. And then we have to act accordingly. And then the last one, when our activity is finished, basically we also should monitor and we should look back and see what went wrong, if something went wrong, what can we change? Or even when an activity is running, yeah, we have to monitor constantly what is going on and how do we assess the risks. Now, when we go deeper into it, yeah, the first one when we see eh, is identify the specific types of participants who will take part in our activity. When we think here about this, yeah, uh, it is important that we know who will take part in our activity. Hmm. Why do we need this? Eh, we need to know this because, of course, we would like to ensure that everybody feels comfortable in our group, welcome in our group, and that they also feel somehow that we uh, meet their needs and that we also take their needs into account. Yeah? And especially um, when we do a lot of activities where movement is involved, especially for those with a special need, yeah? we have to see that activities can run smoothly and e effectively as possible. So this is something uh, we for sure need to know. Yeah? And for that, we have to know who will come to our activity? What do we take to into account? <clears throat> uh, what is going on? So in order to do this, eh, we have some key considerations. The first one is we have to consider the abilities and the needs of the participants. Eh, we have to know who is coming in our activity. What are their abilities? What is missing? What... Um, uh, special need to their face, yeah? uh, because once once we know this, yeah, and we knew it before, we can modify, change yeah? sometimes a little bit our activity. Of course, we also have to take the age of the participants into account, yeah? especially yeah, when you work, for example, with young kids, yeah, or with adults, or young adults, or teenagers. It can be a huge difference. Mm? Only the maturity level of the participants is something that we can we have to take into account. Yeah? Especially, for example, if you work with kids, yeah, it's more or less guiding, uh, facilitating older yeah, people, teenagers, young adults. Yeah, they have their own voice. They can say what they want. They can express themselves yeah, according to the level. Yeah? Of course, always take to, into account the level yeah, of the special need, the level of the maturity. And then the last one is also sometimes the cultural background of participants. And the cultural back background of participants, 
that is something that we forget or we tend to forget, especially when we're working uh, in very, very mixed groups or in an international setting. Eh? In an international setting, when people are coming from different parts of Europe or from the, the different parts of the world, eh? sometimes culture yeah, or the cultural background, uh, we need to take into account when we set up an activity. For example, religion, yeah? religion, culture, yeah? but also the country. Yeah? There are differences in how you work with people, how you approach people. Uh, uh, when you develop an activity like social distance, uh, uh, touching each other, hugging each other, yeah? that is something uh, we have to take into account. And especially yeah, when then there are also people with special needs involved. Yeah? Then for sure, we have to check this before. And basically, basically, the uh, advice is the more you know of your participant beforehand, the better you can prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. Once we know who will be in our activity, yeah, then it's the start to create a plan to reduce and eliminate potential risks that we can identify. Identification yeah, of the possible risk is something um, essential. Yeah? We have to stay still yeah, and think about what can go wrong, yeah? uh, what are the possible risks, yeah, and how can we work around it. So identification of potential risks yeah, can be um, hard sometimes. Yeah? Some things are very obvious. If you work with visually impaired people, uh, basically you know that you cannot do uh, some activities if people stay alone or stand alone in a room full with uh, lots of things uh, on the floor or with slippery floors or something like that. And if you have people who are physically impaired and sitting in a wheelchair, yeah, we don't find or we don't need to find the locations with a lot of stairs where there is no elevator, for example. Yeah. Um, because that brings also a lot of potentials for risks. Uh, and that is something we don't want to or we would like to reduce as much as possible. It's not only about physical risks, yeah, but it can, as it's written here, also about uh, psychological risks. Uh, injuries, psychological risks that uh, sometimes uh, it's interesting to know beforehand. Um, mostly we will not know this directly from people themselves who will take part in the activity, except if they express it themselves, for example, in a participation uh, list uh, that you asked before. But sometimes it's also because we knew this from parents who contact us um, from the youth workers who will send people to us uh, if we have good contacts with them we always can ask are there some special um, issues uh, according to psychological uh, facts that we have to take into account yeah. Also, yeah, we need to consider uh, all the needs yeah, of the people and that they are also all involved. Here, it is important that we would like to see that people who take uh, part in our activity or feel welcome yeah, uh, and also yeah, that they also feel that we take uh, their sorrows or their uh, limitations into account. Sometimes it is very easy to express this, eh, to say this beforehand to people. Uh, sometimes we have to take into account without saying, because we would like to keep the surprise of an exercise of a game eh, within the game itself and that we tackle this afterwards in a debriefing. And we also have to create a risk assessment. Eh? Risk assessment, okay, it's about the potential risks eh? or the uh, issues that can create a risk that we knew this before. Eh? And sometimes we really have to think carefully about it. Yeah? Sometimes when you group uh, with trainers or facilitators, yeah, um, it's easier. It's easier yeah, because with the more people you think about it, the more voices you have, yeah, the more input you have from the others, because maybe you don't see uh, certain risks because for you it's very natural, very easy going, and you haven't thought about it. Okay, what will happen when we, for example, involve a people uh, who is hard hearing? So we have 
difficulties to hear because then it's very difficult to express an exercise if you didn't talk about it and how you will solve this. Also, we have to develop an emergency plan. Right? So creating an emergency plan in case something happens. This can go very basic. Sometimes it's to establish a contact list of people we have to take into account if something happens. Who do we have to phone? Who is the contact person of um, the young people involved in our group? Do we have all the necessary telephone numbers or email addresses and so we can inform people? When you're outside or when you're in a camp or in a new environment, that it's not your environment, it's also very easy uh, yeah, and normal also that you make a list. Okay, where is the nearest doctor? Eh? What are the contact details? Where is the nearest hospital? What is the quickest way to reach there? How long do we have to, uh, to drive, for example, to there? Eh? If you know this before, um, it can also can help you eh, when you develop your emergency plan. And then, of course, provide training and support. Eh? Your in a small group, eh, you know everything because you thought about it. Eh? You have a plan about, okay, what are the certain risks? But who else does need to be informed? Who else of the youth workers, of the staff, of the place where you're sitting, for example? Yeah. So also think about that Yeah. and provide them training. Yeah, training doesn't have to go deep. Sometimes it's just to explain, okay, in case something happens, these are the lists, uh, those are the contact details. Uh, you make uh, an agreement, uh, okay, who will drive? Uh, if you know this before, who will have to drive to a hospital? Then it's easy for you as a youth worker uh, or a facilitator when you're working with a group and something happens, then it's easy immediately uh, who to have to contact so you don't, for example, need to group alone. But it is something that you have to be taught beforehand. The third one is, okay, once you have identified um, the potential risk, you also need to plan how to respond to the risks when they occur. Yeah? And in order to create a plan, you have, of course, to assess the risks yeah, when they arise in a mixed group yeah, uh, before you start your activity. Yeah. But you also need to establish clear guidelines for behavior and communication within the group. So yeah, in case something happens, who will join? Who will take the lead? Who will phone? Yeah, who will drive to the hospital? Yeah, if you have people from a different culture, yeah, because it's an international activity, who will join? Do we take somebody who speaks the local language? Um, or do we also take somebody who speaks the language of the young person if the communication in English is not very well? Yeah, this is something that we uh, for sure uh, need to check beforehand and that it's very clear when it's written down. Yeah. Uh, and of course, develop safety protocols for any activity uh, that the group will be participating in. Yeah. If you do, for example, certain activity uh, where you involve movement or you involve some outdoor uh, um, uh, exercises eh, where, for example, you have to climb or you have to be blindfolded or you have to be on ropes, eh, etc. Also involve the group. Yeah? And before you start your exercise, also say very clear eh, that, okay, we have to take into account the safety. Yeah? And don't be afraid yeah, to ask to people to help out. Yeah? Because we're all in the same uh, game. We are all in the same exercise, so we all want that everybody is safe. And eh? not only you as a youth worker, but for sure you can uh, you can be for sure that also your participants would like to be safe when they are undergoing or when they go through an exercise. Yeah, and for sure they also will help all the others eh? because nobody wants to get hurt. Yeah, uh, and again here we have this provide the training. Eh? Training. Um, you can test, yeah, you can um, uh, say this beforehand, uh, uh, if something happens, what will we do, yeah, uh, because, of course, every exercise that we do, sometimes there is a small risk, but if you share this, yeah, with your group, also with your participants, yeah, then you already are a step in front of it, yeah, and the last one here is monitor the group, yeah? during your activity, basically, yeah, check, 
look around, give feedback, yeah. Uh, look if people feel safe to do an exercise. If you see or you notice, for example, that people are, don't feel comfortable, have a chat with them, talk to them. And sometimes uh, really people who have, for example, afraid of heights or losing their balance, yeah. Um, you don't have to force them, let them try. Yeah, and if you see that they don't feel comfortable, give them the freedom to step out and talk about it. Yeah, sometimes it's just the opposite direction, meaning that people, okay, who are afraid of losing balance, for example, they still would like to because they feel safe and yeah? because you can ensure together with the rest of the group that don't worry. Yeah, if something happened, we are here. And we take to uh, we take this into account, and that eh, just because you're expressing this, this already can uh, change a lot in the behavior of the group towards people, yeah, who have, uh, for example, a disability, yeah, uh, but also vice versa because they prolong, they feel safe, uh, they enlarge their borders, yeah, so they also learn a lot, yeah, and then also plan for the unexpected. Yeah, meaning you can be prepared as much as possible, yeah, but you always have to take into account that there is or that you have a certain backup plan in case something happens. Yeah. Um, in a lot of cases, you will never need it, yeah, uh, but it's better to be prepared. Yeah, if something happens, everybody knows what to do, yeah, um, and at least there is a backup plan. Yeah? And then the last uh, issue eh, when we're talking about risk management yeah, is also the monitoring of the activity. Yeah, the monitoring of the activity that is yeah, when you play, when you do an exercise, always keep your eyes open. Yeah? And whenever an emergency comes up and you handle correctly afterwards, also discuss it. Did we do it in a good way? What did we forget? Where did it went wrong? what went good yeah and learn out of your mistakes yeah and when you learn out of your mistakes yeah just don't talk within your trainers team or with the rest of the group yeah so you also can frame it but also write it down write it down somewhere because yeah afterwards other colleagues other youth workers may also would like to do the same activity because it was a nice activity. But if something happened, eh, you also can share this information eh, and also what you did yeah, to solve it so that also other people within the future are better prepared than you yeah, uh, when something effectively happened. happened yeah? And you can share this experience. Yeah, you can share this experience. You can talk about it. Yeah, um, but it's good. Yeah, it's make the group stronger. Yeah, it makes your uh, co uh, youth workers uh, who do other activities afterwards also stronger, better prepared. But it also will uh, make you stronger. You stronger as a youth worker because next time when you start to develop a new activity, yeah, or a new project, at least you can take to. Uh, take this into account and you will see that you will be better prepared than ever before. Mm. So risk management, yeah, risk management is um, something we have to take in, into account. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you can enjoy your activity. Yeah? You are part of the group. You are together with the group. Yeah. But in your mind, you're always prepared. Yeah. And a lot of things go wrong or can go wrong but that doesn't mean that it has to go wrong. Yeah. So the better you prepared, we always say the better your activity yeah, and the better also your feeling for you, but also for all the people, all the young people that uh, are taking part in your activity. Hmm. If you have any questions, yeah, you always can send your feedback yeah, through our inclusion platform.au. Uh, and feel free yeah, to send us some comments uh, or IDs if you have them. Thank you very much and goodbye.